In our previous session, we explored using our simplest numerical technique uh, to solve first order differential equations, and that technique was called Euler's method. In that technique, we chopped off the Taylor series to the linear term and basically drew small straight line segments to, to try to walk through the solution as close to the actual true solution as we possibly could. Now we noticed that that got off to a good start, but it didn't take too long before the solution started deviating away from the true solution, and that wasn't so good. We also played with adding an extra term on the Taylor expansion, so instead of chopping it off at the linear term, we chopped it off at the squared term to see if that would make things better. And it, and it didn't really help enough. Uh, we, we conjectured that the reason for that was that we were always aiming our solution, these, these little line segments or even curved line segments, from one edge of the interval that we were trying to predict. Uh, so we're trying to predict x1 from x0. And x0 was our initial condition. We had that. And we knew the slope at x0. And we were trying to point in a direction that uh, was indicated by the slope at x0. Well, if the curve was bending away, we could never quite catch up correctly. And therefore, we introduced maybe a little more error than we would have liked to. Uh, there were two gentlemen, uh, Rung, who in 1895 started a new approach, an improvement on Euler's method, and it was improved even again by uh, Dr. Cutta, and we've combined those two uh, people together to form now what we call the Rung-Cutta method, or maybe I should call it the Rung-Cutta methods because there really are a lot of them that people have developed over the years and made improvements upon them to try to get uh, less and less error into the solution of our differential equation. Uh, they all involved multiple steps or taking a look at what the slopes would be at inter intermediate intervals, not just on one edge of the interval. And the method that they came up with back in 1901, I think it was, uh, ended up being equivalent to a fifth order Taylor polynomial, but without the complexity. So what I'm going to do is simplify even, even, even more and give you what we call a two-stage Runcutta method. Uh, it's not the one that they originally came up with. The one they came up with was even better than the one I'm going to show you, but this one will demonstrate uh, quite a bit of improvement from what we had on the Euler approach. So let's give that a try, and we will lay out the philosophy behind this two-stage Runcutta method. Stage one really looks similar, almost identical to Euler's method. It's still using only two terms of the Taylor expansion. So it's, it's a linear predictor. But the difference is that we are only going to move halfway between x0 and what we think x1 might be. Now keep in mind we don't know what x1 is, so this notion of x sub 1 half which seems to kind of indicate that you're halfway between x0 and x1 is our best guess at that halfway point and using the normal Euler approach to do so. After we get that value, we're, we're not going to call that the solution at that point, but we're going to use that as a better place to calculate the derivative, which is still represented by our function. So we put that value in for the x term, we keep the original t value, which would be t0 in this case, and we get a better estimate of the slope that represents that whole interval. So we'll start off with x0, I'll call it x0 in this case, and we'll move an entire step just like we did with the Euler method, but with a, an improved slope, and just ask how much better that would be. That will produce an x1. And then we'll do the whole thing all over again. We'll take this half step uh, using t1, and we'll come up with a point between our calculated x1 and what we think might be an x2, and again, we'll call that x1 half. And then do the same thing. We'll recalculate the deriv derivative at that point and move from the original position a uh, unit of h to come up with our x2 and go round and round and round until we're, we're done with all of the values that we're interested in. So let's put this now into an algorithm. Uh, we'll go back to our 
Euler algorithm and just modify it. So the first four steps are exactly the same. We're setting up our initial value. We're setting up our h, our little our incremental h value by being some even division of the entire interval over which we're trying to solve the equation. We'll set up a solution vector that we will graph and start with our initial condition. Just like our Euler algorithm, we will set up a for loop to go through all n of the steps, but the difference is we now have this two-stage approach where we take an intermediate value and use it as a basis to recalculate the slope and then produce a, a, the next step in the solution. Save it, increment the time period, and do it again. So that uh, could be done in MATLAB. It could also be done in Excel very easily. Since we already have an Excel file we've been using, all we really have to do is continue with the run cut a column. That's going to be our solution. Uh, and create this half step column that we'll use as an intermediate point and compare it with the exact solution that we've had in the previous problem. So we start with T0, we have X0, we compute the half step. Uh, what I don't show here, but also is implied, is that you have a derivative, is, so f of x of 1 half and t0 is going to give me my new slope, which is not shown, and that is going to be multiplied by h and then to be added to 0 to give me my new x1. And then do the same thing, move this half step up, use it to recalculate the slope, add it to the previous value, and you're going to get an x2. Now we'll plot this uh, uh, run cut a solution uh, and we'll plot it using green and if you compare the green curve to the red one, the red you know exact one, I think you can see that this was a really big improvement. We're, we're hanging in there much closer to the exact solution using this rather simple modification to Euler's method uh, and the simplest of all the run cut a methods that we have. And you can see the old solutions, or old attempts, are lagging behind. And I would say that it's just as easy to do this method as to do Euler's method. You know, this really puts Euler's method out of business, in my opinion. Of course, this may be put out of business by some other even more powerful methods. Uh, for example, the, the, the original Runcutta method that was published back in 1901, uh, that ends up being equivalent to a fifth order Taylor approximation using points that are in the, the interval between x0 and x1 and then between x1 and x2 and so forth. So this is, this is definitely an improvement uh, that we can use. We're not going to take it any further than that. Instead, we'll just give you a chance to try uh, some homework. And you can go to section 7.2. This is, again, the computer exercise section. Go to problem 9. And uh, we'll pick a step size of 0.1 and a total range of, to do our differential equation from 0 to 10. And then just do the algorithm before. Put it, put it in MATLAB, code it up, make sure you're, you're doing well on your intenting and flops and comments and so forth, and give it a try. This shouldn't take too long. It's just a fairly easy adaptation of the code you developed for the Euler, uh, the Euler example. So give that a try. And uh, we'll call this uh, video an end. There wasn't too much there to do. Uh, what we're going to do next time is up the ante a bit and ask, could we apply the same kind of methods to second order differential equations? And your, your uh, book, as we move to 7.4, uh, covers it a little differently than I do. It'd be worth reading the book and see how they do it. The approach I'm taking is going to be more of a matrix approach, just a little bit, um, well, I like it better. So we're, we're going to give it a try. And we're going to find it's not hard, but maybe a little bit more uh, abstract than the Euler method and the Runcata method. So we'll see you then.